We have reached the small community of Lacombe, and behind me is Bayou Lacombe. It's on the shores of Lake Pontchartrain, and these marshy bayous were once home to the Akalapisa and Choctaws before European arrival. Now, as I've stated in other videos, these tribes came much later. They followed in the footsteps of the Marksville and Chifuncta cultures. By the time Europeans settled here, a written account stated that the Akolapisa and Choctaw had migrated to the area from the east to escape extermination and starvation. The first group of Europeans to step foot on Lacombe soil was Pierre Lemoyne, Sir Diberville, and four Canadians. They washed up near the area of Lacombe in 1699, but Iberville find it riddled with too many mosquitoes to make a settlement. It's a good thing that boy didn't go to Golden Meadow around Mardi Gras because those gnats would have picked him up and brought him right back to France. If you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know the common theme in these small Louisiana towns. Much of the history is shrouded in mystery, and many stories come up when researching how these towns got their names. A comb is no different. One theory is that a Frenchman that goes by the name of Rousseau et Lacombe came by boat from Lake Pontchartrain to this area. Lacombe was looking to set up a base of operations for his business of supplying charcoal to the new French colony of Nouvelle Orléans, or New Orleans. Another theory is that Lacombe is the translation of the Choctaw's name for the bayou here. They called it Buchchua, which means sneezing. Forgive me for all my native translations. Also, the established date of the town has many theories. In the census of 1722, for instance, records of Lacombe listed himself, the Choctaws, one associate, and a woman living here. Now, another source stated that Lacombe was not settled until 1813, but a different man with the Lacombe last name would be thrusted into the legend. Claude Vignon dit Lacombe originated from St. Alban de Roche, France. He arrived in Louisiana on May 23, 1718, and he would set up his base of operations in New Orleans while establishing trade with the natives on the North Shore. Now, this is as early as 1724. His interest was in the production of tar and pitch, which was abundant in Lacombe, just due to the amount of huge longleaf pine trees. And tar is a dark brown or black odorous viscous liquid that's obtained from distillation of organic materials like wood or peat. Pitch is pretty much the same thing, uh, especially with tars and various conifers, it's all kind of blended in. Tars obtained from the trees that are old and they're beginning to decay because older they are, the, the greater quantities that they contain of that oil-like substance that yields tar. The tar was used in massive quantities to make wooden ships airtight and it slowed the deterioration of the ropes that they would use on the ships. Claude Vignon de Tlacombe became interested in the production of tar and pitch, so he began to operate on a site located along the waterway west of Bonfuca on highland near the head of the bayou. He encountered a small tribe of Choctaws in the area and he would enslave them and use their labor in his operations. By 1748, the name of Lacombe's Bayou was still reported by the slaves, natives, and various travelers to the area. Surveyors and map makers called the area Bayou Lacombe, and it was later named the Village of Lacombe by the late 1790s. One benevolent man in Lacombe's history stood out above others, and his name was Père Adrien Roquette. He lived from 1813 to 1887 and would visit his maman in Lacombe, who was part Choctaw. He played with the tribal children and eventually learned the language, customs, and games. When he grew up, Roquette fell in love with a Choctaw woman, but his parents disapproved once he decided he wanted to marry her. So they just shipped him over to France, just in order to separate them. Now, this was all done under the guise of sending him away to study. Eventually, Adrien Roquette finished his studies and returned to Lacombe looking for his love, only to find out that she was dead. Locals said that she refused to eat or bathe and died of a broken heart just waiting for her man to come back. After this tragedy, Roquette decided to become a priest and live amongst the Choctaw as a missionary. He went to the seminary in Plattenville along Bayou Lafourche and began his clerical studies. His devotion to the Choctaw was recognized and praised by the tribe and they gave him the name Chataima, which means like a Choctaw. He had a heart as big as Aquata or the Great Lake nearby. It's been said that no one loved the Choctaw and Lacombe as much as Perroquet. You can learn more about this and other tribes by visiting the Bayou Lacombe Museum. 